Hey good people, welcome to Devs and Dice. My name is Leif and this is Boxes of Shame, where I each week, almost each week, try to paint a miniature for Dungeons and Dragons. This week's miniature is the Etten, part of the Wave 11 from WizKids, uh, their series called Nolster's Marvelous Miniatures. I used some new techniques that might be of interest for you to see. As always, if you like these videos, please hit the like button, share, or even subscribe. Anything you can do will help out the channel. Anyways, with that out of the way, let me show you how I painted the Etten. A couple of years ago I started getting into D&D. As my passion for D&D grew, so did my collection of minis. And like many others out there, I now have boxes of shame. Legions of unpainted minis. Now this is my underdog story. This is me painting every single one of my miniatures. As usual, I start out by Zenithal priming the miniature. You can really see all of the details pop out when you do this, and even though I will be covering the miniature with several coats of paint, I find it easier on the eyes. Now in order to make the skin look as natural as possible, I started with an undercoat of burnt red from Vallejo. The red comes from, uh, well, of course, the fact that I suppose the Etten has red blood pumping in its veins. After the undercoat had dried, I started laying in some Bugman's Glow from Citadel. I paint this on the majority of the skin, only leaving some of the recesses with the burnt red color. Starting on the highlights, I came in with some Cadian Flesh Tone from Citadel. Alright, once that layer is done, I move over to more brighter colors. In this case, I chose Kislev Flesh. At this point, I thought that the colors had too much contrast and that I lost some of that, well, redness in the skin. Easily fixed. I just simply diluted some of the Bugman's Glow and Burnt Red I already had in my wet palette to glaze back some of the warmth in the skin. I'm coming in with some Pale Flesh with Vallejo game color on the very tips of the highlights. I of course dilute the paint so it goes on thin. Now I wanted to take the highlights as far as possible since I have been known to be the guy that sort of holds back when it comes to highlights. I wanted to try to take it to 11 if you will. So on to this Etten's loincloth fur thingy. 
My plan was to come in with some Rhinox Hide and Mornfang Brown and just do a wet blend. The loincloth was not the center of attention, so you will see that I sort of purposefully leave it quite plain. I used the same color combo on his club, so first base coat with Rhinox hide, and then some wood groove streaks with Mornfang brown. Now it is time to start working on the hair. I wanted the Etten's heads to have two separate but similar hair colors. I started with a base coat of heavy red from Vallejo for one of the heads. The right one, let's call him Jeff. Jeff the Ginger. I think the inspiration from this was seeing that Jeff had a mohawk, which reminded me of the Warhammer Dwarves and their Slayers. Now once the base coat was dry, I wanted to add some shade and tint. I decided to use one of my contrast paints, Voluptu no, 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 Volupus Pink. I added some to my wet palette and diluted it slightly with some Flow Aid. The hope was to get a little bit more shade in the recesses. Alright, starting with a base coat of P3 Bloodstone for the other one's hair. You know what, alright, I'm calling him Bob the Brunette. Once the base coat was done, I bounced back to Jeff for some highlights. Amaranth Red from Vallejo, a very vivid orange color, was used to give the dark red a bit of a more orange punch. This paint's pigment is quite thin and might require several coats to get a good saturation. Once that was done, I mixed a brighter version and did the same thing for Bob's hair. And yeah, whenever I said hair previously, I include of course the facial hair. So time to do some extreme highlights. For this I went with P3 Heartfire, a warm yellow color. You will want to be careful with this highlight and keep it tight. I decided to go a bit heavier on the mohawk. The logic behind this was that here his hair is the thinnest and I think also the sun might have had a, something to do faded it. Now I use the same yellow as a final highlight for both Jeff and Bob. This helps to bring the two hair colors closer. And this is what we have so far. It's starting to look nice. The Etten had some skulls and bones around his belt, probably from old meals out in the wild. I used some jackbone from P3 to give all of these a base coat.
And since I have it on the brush, we might as well paint those horns in that nasty looking club. And after that, we need to work on the teeth. Both Jeff and Bob have somewhat lacking dental hygiene, so we'll start by adding some Rhinox hide on the teeth. Once dry, we'll come back in with some Jackbone to add some needed highlights on those pearly whites. The detail on this sculpt is actually pretty good and penciling in the details was quite easy. Thanks, WizKids! Alright, here I'm adding some black and white from Vallejo to the palette. I start out by giving Bob and Jeff the eyeshadow treatment, which means that I just paint the eyes black. And once the eyeshadow has dried, it's time to carefully paint in some of that white. Try your best to leave a thin line of black around the edges. And this is what it looks like for now. Now, let's move on to some metallics. I start out with some gunmetal grey on Bob's weapon. By the way, does anyone know what kind of weapon this is? It looks like a crude axe. Perhaps that's what Bob was going for just took a piece of sharp metal and fastened it onto a shaft and called it an axe. There were some small details here and there on the model, which got some metallic paint as well. Now to break up the monotony of the gunmetal grey, I think it might be a good idea to come in with some copper, also from Vallejo. It just makes things a little bit more visually interesting. Right. We're now on the home stretch. I used all of the various brown paints I had in my wet palette to start an earth-like coat on the base. I'm trying to get some variation between the lighter and the darker areas. Bob and Jeff is a big guy and casts quite a large shadow. Let's move back onto the eyes. I used a small micron pen to dot in the pupils. And at this point, it's fairly clear that of the two, Jeff is clearly the hothead and Bob tries to be more composed. Moving back on the base, we'll use some lighter colors to try to dry brush in some highlights. A while back, I gathered some roots from some bushes that got dug up. I am happy I did this because these little buggers make awesome trees and branches. I snapped off a piece and glued it to the base. I even glued a small branch onto the larger log. Time for some greenery. Lowland shrubs and yellow flowers from Army Painter will complement the rest of the elements nicely. Looking good, Jeff and Bob. I've had these pigments sit on my shelf for some months now. What better time to use them than now? The fine powder really brings a nice finishing touch to the base and gives everything a well-needed scale. Now, Bob and Jeff are rowdy boys. They need to look the part. Some red ink from Vallejo and some tenebrous blue from Green World stuff will do the trick. The world of Dungeons and Dragons is a dangerous place for an Etin, and battles are often won before they even start. Having some war paint on will give Jeff and Bob the edge they will need out in the wild. Wow, these boys are really starting to look the part. Let's have a look at where we ended up.
Ah, there you are. Thank you for staying around. I hope you liked the result and this video. If you have any thoughts, questions, comments, please feel free to post them in the comment section down below. Times are really strange in the world and I do hope that you are all safe and sound. I, for my part, want to take this opportunity and thank you for watching the entire video. Uh, if you liked it, again, please like, share or subscribe. Again, it really helps the channel out. With that out of the way, I want to wish you an awesome day. Stay safe out there. Until next time, to the loop.